the Pleasure. commiserations wasn't to be here at the O2, but to be involved in a thrilling final, can you take so much from that in defeat? Yeah, of course. I, you know, you can't win everything at the end of the day. You can't. Uh, you know, as I played it right tonight, there was a massive wind coming across the stage. It's not bare, but. It's been like our last five out of six weeks, to be honest, so it's something I've got to get used to. You know, Luke had to deal with it. We spoke about it before the final. He said he struggled with it, I struggled with it, but we still managed to, to put on a good game. And after the tenth leg, it, it was lovely. It allowed us, I think, when you see, to be able to play our great darts then, because the wind stopped uh, coming across the stage and was able to play a fantastic game. If it had been like that from the zero leg, result probably would have been the same, but it might have been an absolute thriller. But he did fantastic tonight and, uh, you know, he's the rightful champion. What's it like stood behind a player when it's almost if they can't miss? Because that little five-leg blitz that he puts on would have put anyone away. Yeah, I'm capable of them five-leg blitz as well myself. So he could have been stood behind me watching me do that. You know, I could have been stood behind Michael, him, Michael Van Gogh and him doing that to me. And I could have, Luke could have been sat behind Michael Smith doing that. We're all capable of it, but he does it more often than most people. And that is what puts him... As one of the top players in the world, doesn't it? And I think that's why, you know, me, Luke, Mike Van Gogh, Michael Smith, all the, the top players in the world, because we're capable of, of things like that under pressure. And, uh, you know, he, he showed that tonight, and that's why he's the, the deserved uh, Ch Premier League champion. Is it not a surprise anymore when he does this? It's the story now around Luke, just a world class dark player winning games. Yeah, well, it will get to that point one day. I think everybody's like desperate to see him win, and everybody wants to see Luke Lilla win. It'll get to the point where probably people in 10 years' time will probably end up being like Phil Taylor when no one wants to see him win anymore because he wins everything and that's what the unfortunate events that happen but uh, you know he's won his first major title we all knew it was coming we didn't know when it was going to be but it was always going to happen um, but he is of course he's, he's beatable he's definitely beatable but tonight he wasn't and he was you know if we look at it as a whole he was definitely deserved uh, a champion and uh, I'm sure he'll win many many more of them Thank you, Phil. Luke, you two have contested now the World Final and the Premier League Final. I'm mm. sure it won't be the last major final. No, I hope not. Does it almost feel like Barney and Taylor a little bit? Uh, th them two are legends in their own rights any, but anyway, but of course, you know, we, I, I mean, I can never promise you anything, but like, sitting here, you'd, you'd hope that there's going to be many more major finals between us both. I don't know if, I don't sound big but I do feel like we are the two best players in the world. I don't, I don't know if everyone else agrees. I just think that's probably the, the right thing to say. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say Luke's better than me. I'm not going to say sit here and say I'm better than Luke. I think we, you know, we have that level that anybody can beat anybody. But of course, he won tonight and he was the better player. But I do feel over the next, if he wants to play that long, Luke, 15, 20 years, we could see many, many battles in, in major finals, of course. Um, and I hope that's the case as well. And this is your Premier League debut. Do you remember what you were doing 12 months ago before you'd even won your first major? Well, I certainly wasn't sat watching the final. <laughs> I wasn't watching it. Um, I, can't, I actually can't remember what I was doing, but it's, it was a privilege to be a part of this. You know, it was a fantastic um, um, season. I'm really, really proud of, of the way I conducted myself. You know, a great um, league season for myself. Uh, I think it was 100 and a half average. You know, I couldn't have asked too much for myself. Four nightly wins making the final, 102, 103 average in the final. I did all I could, played my best. It won enough, and that's what it is sometimes. You can't always win everything. That's why I set up on the stage. You can't, you can't win everything. You know, there is other great players in this world, but uh, I am gutted, of course, but I'm really, really proud of the, of the season as a whole. Jeff, thank you. Thank you. Luke, you're obviously good pals. You practiced together before the start of the night as well. Mm. Is that difficult to suddenly become rivals on stage? We talk about it all the time that it's mm. that's difficult, but and what did you say to them at the end? Well, really no, it's not, it's not hard because I've had it so many times where you, you're friends with people. I, I love Luke to bits. We get on really well. But when I'm on the, on the dartboard, we're not friends. You know, you, you want to beat each other. What did you say? What did I say to him at the end? Yeah. I said to him uh, what he said to me. Because when I won the world, he was so mature. He said, go on, go on and celebrate. And that's why I said to him. Go on. You, remember what you told me? Go on and celebrate. Because sometimes you... You'd, when you win uh, such a big tournament, you just don't really know what to do. And I didn't know what to do when I won the World Championships. And he said to me, go on, go on and enjoy it and, and go on and celebrate. And I did. And that's why he gave him that bit of advice back. Because you know, I didn't want him to feel like he had to be too respectful or not celebrate. I wanted to go on and, and enjoy the occasion, which he deserved. Thank you. Look, how excited are you for what else is to come this season? Obviously, you're off to New York and you've got the World mm. Cup, the World Match Play. Yeah, it's, it's so... Uh, 
every week we've got so many competitions to play. You cannot sit here, be disappointed and, and be down. There's so many tournaments to be involved in now, which is the great thing about darts. I think 20 years ago, you used to, there was like four or five major tournaments and you could sit there and be disappointed for two months whoever, you know, in them days. And you'd be disappointed for such a long time and it'd be hard to build yourself up. Whereas now, you know, there's a, there's a competition every week. So, you know, I've got New York next week. I want to go into that and win it. Of course, I want to win everything I'm playing. So um, I'll go to next week. I'll enjoy myself and uh, I'll, I'll be hoping I can win that. But you've got the match play, of course. That's another one that I'll, I'll have my eye on in a few months. Luke, it seems like you and Elizabeth could really form a rivalry now for the next 10 years. Would you, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, I, I do agree with that. I think there's definitely... a. a you know, a reasonable thing that could happen. Of course, in the next two, three, four years, there's going to be other youngsters that will come through, and they may take Luke's shine away from him. He, you know, there, there could be another great youngster that comes through. You know, who knows? Because he was able to do it at such a young age. There's obviously going to be other players out there that can do the same. So, but I do believe that it takes a lot to be one of the top players in the world of darts, and he's definitely one of them. So I do feel like over the next five to ten years, for definite, that we will we will battle out for many, many major titles, and I hope that's the, the case as well. Do you forget how young he is? He's 17. Yeah. Now, on that stage, Look, you can be as young as you want, but the way he deals with the pressure is what is, you know, he's a fantastic player, but the way he deals with the pressure is what, to me, is the most remarkable thing about him. And he's I think it's... Yeah, well, he can do, but it gets to a point where you watch him, you think, how much better can you get? You know, it's, he's already at a level where you think... Can you get much better? He possibly could. Of course he could. But uh, the thing for me that amazes me about him so much is his composure under pressure more than his talent. He's, he's, you know, for a 17-year-old to be so so composed under pressure is what impressed me the most out of everything, to be honest. And that is one of the key things you need to be a top elite player is the, the composure under pressure. And he's got it. So if his talent shines for even more and more, then he'll win um, bags of stuff. How do you feel your thoughts? You go into your break at 5-5. Five, five, Pulled it back to five five, mm. and you come back from the break, and he does you with a nine data. Do you just mm. what do you what do you what goes through your mind at that moment? Not we're, much. We're thinking here, yeah, you cheeky back up. I mean, it's a not much went through my mind. Obviously, I was really proud of him, really happy for him because a nine data in such a big final is obviously absolutely insane. But it's just one leg to me, so I, it didn't change my thought process of the way I thought. I didn't think when he hit it that I couldn't win the game. I just. You know, as you see on the stage, I was really happy for him, really proud of him because he hit such a fantastic nine data in such a pivotal moment in the game. So, but it didn't change my 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 mind, my thinking. I still believed I could have won, but you know, he went on a fantastic run of of legs there at the end and showed why he deserved to be the champion. A lot of sport is based on rivalries, or Harley Frazier, the Ashes, mm. and Ben the Eubank, but you two just don't look like you've got it. In yourselves to dislike each other. It's yeah, but you're, a, talk, you're, you're talking about boxers that won't <coughs> punch each other's heads off when you're home <laughs> with dark players. There's a complete yeah. difference. That's a fair yeah. Point, but, yeah, yeah, but, 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 you, are, but yeah, you seem to be the best of enemies, shall Yeah, because what's the point of animosity in, in this game? You know, if you walk into a room and you have animosity against someone, it's, uh, it's not a nice place to be around. We're around each other all the time. I don't want to have that animosity towards and I'm sure you'll come in and tell you don't want to have that animosity around me. We just get along, and that sometimes happens in sport. You know, there's many sportsmen that they just don't get along because they're enemies because they think that what each other's better than the other. I don't think we think each other's better than the other. We both know how good we are, um, and you know we have the utmost respect. And I love that about him a lot because if he didn't have that respect for me, I would feel a little bit hurt because obviously I've I've achieved a lot more than he has. But he's got that respect for me, which I like, and I've got that respect for him because. We both we both get along really well. We both relish each other's talent. Is there anything you can you can try to put him off his stride? Like, no, uh, there isn't because I wouldn't want to. Up or slowing no. down or, or getting his head a bit. Like no, because I wouldn't want to do that. That's not cheating, but I don't want to put him off because at the end of the day, if I do things like that that I've had against me, I'm trying to do things that's not natural. I'd rather beat him at his best, and I think he'd rather beat me at his best. And if I do things to put him off, what does that make me? You know, it doesn't make me a real champion, does it? No, I, I want to play him when he's at his best. I would never, ever try and put any player off, let alone Luke. Um, and I, if I was to beat him tonight, it probably would have been at his best. So I would have, I would have walked away and been so proud that I beat him at his best rather than trying to put him off because I, would, I wouldn't want to do that. So what, what can you do when you know, he's, he's on a, a run like that? Uh, well, I can be better. I think we see in the World Championships. I can, I can be great as well. You know, just tonight he was better. 
at World Championships, I was better. You know, that, then things happen. We might play each other in the final of the World Match Play. I might be better. But you don't need to do anything to put each other off. You know, we're both sportsmen at the end of the day. We understand what it takes to win. Um, there's nothing you can do to, to change anything. He was just better tonight. But like I said, I was better at the world, wasn't I? So, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't matter. He couldn't do anything to, to me in the world. I couldn't do anything tonight. It's just two great players going at it. Luke, well done tonight. Phenomenal Thank you. Um, first and foremost, just talk about the crowd. 40,000-ish. Oh, amazing. What was it like? Yeah, it was insane. It was one of the, the greatest crowds I've been involved in. First of all, they were absolutely respectful. I had no boos, whistles or anything when I was throwing darts, and that's all you asked for. One, one, I thought, it's up there, one of the greatest crowds I, I've been involved in. Obviously, singing Luke, uh, Marcus Smith's song, Michael Van Gerwen's song tonight, Luke's song, my song. It was absolutely incredible tonight. The crowd should be very proud of themselves because it was one of the best I've, I've been involved in. They all celebrated us all in, in the same way. Um, and it was a pleasure to be a part of. You turned the conductor as you came out for the final, mm. geeing up the, yeah. the crowd. Is, is that, that song staying now, is it? it is, well, yeah, it's definitely staying, of course. But, you know, it's, it's important to get the crowd involved in it because it's nice to, you know, they pay their money to come and watch us. It's nice to f make them feel a part of it, you know, and... Uh, I haven't had the best song for many, many years, but I've got a good song now, so uh, I wanted to be, I wanted to feel a part of it, and uh, yeah, it was it was a good feeling for me. There's a lot of talk of rivalry, but I put that aside and talk of you both as top of the tree at the moment, youngsters, and and move on a little bit to inspiration because we all talk about Luke Lillo, but you're playing a part of that now. Mm. It wouldn't be great if you were smashing everybody each week, and you're giving him, you know, great competition as you did in the Worlds and here tonight. Are you seeing a change in darts? Are you seeing the popularity rise from, from kind of within it? Yeah, I, I am seeing it. You know, it's uh, the, the sport has grown massively, but a lot of people think it's just because of Luke Lear, but it's not. I think the whole, you know, I, I'm part of that now. I don't care what anybody says. I think I'm part of that popularity rise. Luke's, a, let's be honest, the main part of it. But, you know, you've got Mike Van Gerwen, with Michael Smith, Nathan Aspinall, Rob Cross going for There's so many great players in, in darts now, and... Uh, you know, it's uh, it's grown massively, and that's that's fantastic for us as players. It's going to mean bigger prize funds, bigger tournaments. You know, we're really really excited for you know the future. I definitely am for sure. Final one for me. Uh, what are six months? I know you go to the states soon, but mm. let's just reflect slightly. What has kind of been the best bits for you? How have you changed as a person? What's life? What the, what's what's been the best of the last six months? Yeah, well, being no, no, champion. Not, not the actual dark, but. How has life changed for you? Yeah, it's changed because it's, it's really, really busy and it's, uh, you know, 100, 100 miles an hour, everything's fast, fast, fast and you don't really get much time off. I'll look forward to New York because I get some time to enjoy myself um, and spend some time with my girlfriend as well that we're both going together. So, you know, it's going to be really good. I'm going to really enjoy it. Um, but I'm going to go there to win. I want to bounce back. I want to win. You know, I want to win in New York. It would be a great feeling for me. But uh, just being involved in these massive events is, is all I lo is all I ask for, and uh, you know, six out of seven major finals for me is absolutely fantastic. So, if I can keep building on that and keep making finals, then uh, you know, it's always going to take a tough performance to beat me, like I said, and it did tonight. Final quick one: What's more nerve-wracking, being up there in the final, or watching these in the final? It's going to be more nerve-wracking on Sunday. I promise you. I didn't feel no nerves tonight. I really didn't. I enjoyed myself. I won't enjoy myself Sunday because the difference is I'm in control of what happens tonight. I'm not in control of what happens on Sunday, so uh, yeah, I think I'm more nervous on Sunday to be honest. Good luck and well done tonight. Great, thank great you very night. much. Cheers. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for a great endorsement of darts and My a great advert for darts. It was a tremendous night for all the players and for obviously you and Luke, and mm. got to say the future is pardon upon Luke and Bevy Brown. Yeah, well, if you're not a Luke, you're just living in a Luke world, aren't you? Everyone's <laughs> just living in it. <laughs> I've, I've put my best Bolton accent on to say that. <laughs> But during that final, obviously there was that turnover the, after yeah. the break with the nine data. And apart from the kitchen sink, I mean, you <coughs> got the game to, to beat him, but it, it just seemed to be, he just went on it. Yeah, I mean, of course. I, th I think uh, after the 10th leg, if he did play that well, I probably would have won the game. To be yeah. honest. I think I, I started all of a sudden playing really well. The breeze stopped a little bit and I was able to play my own game. And you see that if he didn't play as well as he did, I could have been 11-7 uh, the winner. But he showed a level of of his game that I couldn't get quite get hold of, and uh, you know that was the difference, to be honest. But if if, it, if he wouldn't have done what he did, then I could if if he would have played like he did the previous ten legs, 
and I carried on playing like I did, I probably could have won. But I didn't. And he played better, and that was the, that was the key. So I thought it was a fantastic game. We both give it our best, and uh, you know it was a great advert for, for the sport to us. I think there's going to be many, many major finals between us. I'm, in the I'm really looking forward to each final. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I look forward now. to being a part of them. So thank you.